Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create this design right here. This is a really simple one. The technique that I wanna show you is more about how you can select a graphic that you like and literally recreate it to make it your own. Um, so if you wanna learn how to create this design, please do stick around. So as always, we're gonna go ahead and start with our blank backdrop. This is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels, and I will go ahead and design on black today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select my, um, my blank canvas. I'll go to the left top hand corner where it says background color, and I will just go ahead and select black. And then from here, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to create another sports design. This one is gonna be sort of that more um, ripped style. And of course, you can always use these frames for anything else, but I'm gonna come up to the top left-hand corner where it says elements. And there's different ways I can do this. Um, I showed you kind of how to do something with claw marks. It's, it's sort of similar. I can always put um, ripped fabric or ripped anything and see what comes up. For this design, I'm actually gonna do one that I know already exists. So I'm gonna do basketball and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna search for graphics and there's certain graphics that I'm gonna show you. So whenever we're doing a clipping mask, you're just looking for a, pretty much a silhouette frame. And so it really doesn't matter what's in it. It doesn't matter what the color is. So if you're ever searching graphics and you really like the shape of something, you can use that shape and put a clipping mask over it and create your own, your own design. And so showing you what I mean here, um, if I come down here, there's different hearts and different style designs. This is really what I wanted to look at, this one right here because you can see that it sort of has this sort of waved, ripped design, and that's pretty popular. I'm gonna see if there's any more. I know there's some other ones like that that I can use. And so just completely ignoring the basketball, I'm looking at the shape of this graphic and the sort of ripped um, edge style. Um, and so if I find any of the other ones, I know there's a few other ones that I like the shape of as well. Very similar style. I can take it and make it better. Um, same thing here, so this is a good splatter one with a basketball. There would be nothing stopping me from using this splatter shape and putting my own basketball over the top that maybe looks a little bit better than this basketball. Um, and so you can always kind of take these graphics and recreate them with better images or you know, however you want. I am looking to see if I can find any other shapes. I know there is one, I just, sometimes you have to look for a while to find it. Here is another one, very similar to style. So this one has the flames. And if you look, it is, I think, the exact same shape. Yeah, so this design and this design use exactly the same shape. It's just different styles that you can see. Um, and so either way, that was gonna be the same shape. I wanna see if I can find any other shapes. And if not, that's okay. We can show you with this shape too. Eh. Sure, we'll just use this shape so I don't have to keep searching forever. So let's say I can put any ball in here now. So this is a basketball. I can replace this with any sport, any ball I want. And of course it doesn't even have to be a ball. I can use this shape for anything, but I do wanna show you how I might recreate this design. Now I do like this one with the flames. I think that looks pretty cool. It looks a lot better, I think, than just this one with some of the blue. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna look for a picture that I wanna be able to put in here. So I'm gonna keep basketball. I'm just gonna to switch to photos and I'm gonna see if there's maybe a really cool photo that I wanna use. So I do like this one. I've seen this one a lot before and it's got sort of the flames in the glass. And so what I wanna do is take this sort of flame glass basketball and put it in this same um, um, sort of wavy thing and make my own version of this. That way I'm not using the same as everybody else. So anybody else who picks this graphic, mine's gonna be a little bit different. So I'm just gonna close that. So the first thing I wanna do is create a, um, a sort of a background frame. I'm gonna go ahead and click add a page here and I'm gonna drag 
some of these in different areas. I'm gonna get rid of that one entirely. So this is the one I'm gonna kinda wanna recreate here. And I'm gonna make it nice and big. There you go. And I'm gonna go ahead and just download this one just to get the background shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put maybe torn basketball or, or however you wanna put that. Uh, torn basket, basketball. And I can put frame here too. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and download this. Transparent background, whenever I have more than one page, I can select the page that I want. So I want page one. And I'm gonna go ahead and download this. This is now gonna become my frame. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna take the image that I want, which is this one right here, and I'm gonna be putting it over the top. Now that means that I'm gonna have to blow it up right so that it's about the same size so that it fits nice in order to see what i'm doing to be able to see the frame underneath i'm going to go ahead and use some transparency on my top layer so i'll come up to the top right hand corner and the little checkered box that says transparency i can click that and i can lower the transparency of my top image so that i can see the bottom image underneath now right now the top image is a lot bigger so i'm going to go ahead shrink it down so the balls are closer to the same size. So here's my ball. Now sometimes what you might find is when you shrink it down so that it's the same size, you might not be covering all of your frame. You do have to make sure your whole frame is covered. So that might mean, you know, you might have to pick a different photo or you might have to offset it a little bit or play with the the um the size is a little bit so something like this and i think i'm covering i think i'm covering the entire bottom frame let's see i'm going to bring the transparency back up and i'm just going to see if any of my frame is popping out underneath and it doesn't look like it is so i think we're pretty safe here so this is the image that i'm going to use now I can edit this image too, or I can wait until um, I've got it all done to edit it. But let's say I wanted to add contrast or I wanted to add um, anything else to kind of make it my own. Maybe I wanted to make it more black and white, and less saturated, I could do it like that. Or maybe I wanted it to be more saturated, I can do it like that. And so you can definitely, uh, again, play with it however you want. I can add some contrast to it. I can take some contrast away. I can put some filters on it. So I can do anything I want and I can do it before or after. It doesn't really matter. So for this one, I'm just gonna do basketball and I'm gonna put basketball flames maybe or f yeah, basketball flames. Doesn't matter anything that you can remember. So basketball flames and this time I'm gonna download this and I don't need it to be a transparent background. It can if I want to, but uh, it's pretty much just this that I want. Um, I am gonna go ahead and select the page. So I'm still on page one. I'm gonna download that. And then all I'm gonna do is open up Photopea just to get my clipping mask. So I have done a lot of videos lately using Photopea. If you haven't seen them, there's a ton of them. I'm gonna go through it again really quickly, but I'm just gonna use a clipping mask. Um, it's really convenient. So switching over to Photopea, if you just put Photopea in your browser, photopea.com, this will come up. Again, you don't have to log on or anything, it's free. I can click open from computer. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and select my torn basketball frame. So it's gonna open that up. And now what I'm gonna be doing is layering my new design over the top. So I'm gonna hit file open in place. I'm gonna select my basketball flames image. It's gonna open that over the top of my frame. And now what I'm gonna do is come to the top where it says layer. I'm gonna go down to clipping mask and boom. So now I've got my cool basketball inside, um, you know, inside the frame. Now you can look to see where everything lines up. Maybe you decide, hey, I wish the basketball maybe sat back a little bit. No problem, this would be a really easy thing to fix. So because I've still got everything up, if I wanted to go back to Canva and I said, hey, I want the basketball to sit back just a little bit more, I can take this, drag it back a little bit more, and then I can download it again. And so if you keep everything up, then it's really easy to sort of play with and adjust if you want to. So let me download it again and we'll just show you how, how it might look if I 
drag it over just a little bit. Okay, so I'm back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my new image. So I'm gonna go to File, Open in Place. I'm gonna put my new one right on top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a clipping mask again. By the way, you can do this as many times as you want. So you can just keep layering image over image over image and use the clipping mask and you'll get that background, um, that background shape. So you can do this a zillion times. Um, so I'm gonna go to Layer. I'm gonna go to Clipping Mask in there. So now uh, this is what it looks like. I brought that basketball back just a little bit more. I like that. And so this is the one I think I'm gonna go with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit File. I'm gonna go down to where it says Export As and select PNG. I'll give it a second, a box will pop up right here. And so I can change the name of it or I can keep it the same, doesn't matter. So I can do, you know, basketball, um, flames, torn, and then I can go ahead and save it. And so it's gonna download it. And now I'm just gonna jump right back over to Canva and I'm gonna open it again. So real easy. Here I am on Canva. Here's my original picture. Um, I'm gonna move that out of the way for now so you can see what the original one looked like. And now I'm gonna go to uploads and I'm gonna upload my new design. And I'll give it one second to download here. Perfect, okay. So now that it's downloaded, I can click on it and drag and drop it right over here. Woo, what happened? Wait a minute. Back that thing up. Let's go ahead. I'm going to drag and drag and drop right there. I was wanting to cover this top one up. Okay, so you can see here is the original one. And then here is the one that we just created. So they're gonna have the exact same shape, the exact same style, but now they got different images in them. You know, the benefit to doing your own graphic like this is if somebody else was doing a similar design, they might pick this graphic and say, hey, this is the one I wanna use. Well, you don't wanna have the same graphic as anybody else. You want yours to be original and unique. Um, so by picking a different graphic and putting it in there, I can create my, my own unique design, one that nobody else will have. So odds are nobody else chose that exact same photo and that exact same frame and recreated it like this. So this would be a unique design. So I can get rid of the first one and now I have my unique version and I can use it here. So again, here I could use any photo effects on it I want, you know, if I wanted to, I can add text at this point, I can do kind of anything I want. I could even go ahead and put like a cool outline around it if I wanted to. So there's all sorts of ways you could play with this. If I wanted to come to edit image, maybe add a shadow or drop shadow, anything like that, I could, an outline. So let's just show you what it would look like with an outline which I've done a lot of times in the past too. So if you haven't seen those videos, it goes over it step by step. But let's just say I wanted to add a little bit of an outline here to that, just to give it some pop. I could do it this way. I could also change, you know, the color of the outline. So let's say I wanted to add in that yellow and I can still use my eyedropper feature and do something like that. And so that's kind of cool the way I make that pop and I like that. If I maybe want, and maybe not quite that color, I can use my eyedrop feature again as many times as I want to sort of change the style. So I like that one looks a little bit better. So maybe I'll do something like this. I'll click apply. I'm gonna give it a second. It does take a second to finalize here. Boom, so now it's got a little bit of an outline around it. That's a pretty thin outline. Again, I could have made it as thick as I wanted to, but that's gonna make sure that it really, you know, pops on any background I choose to put it on. Um, and so pretty simple um, clipping mask. I've shown you a lot of different clipping masks. The point of all these videos is to show you just how many options you have. So things that you might not have thought about when you were selecting clipping masks. So I want you to know that you can always search through there, search through your elements and quite literally any shape that you see that you like, any graphic that you see that you like, if it's got a good silhouette shape, you can put a photo in it using the clipping mask and create your own design. So it's good to be unique, it's good to have your own stuff. You know, we got a lot of people out there copying other people's stuff constantly. So 
you know if you want your design to stand out you need to do something a little bit different and so this is an easy way to do it if you have any comments or any questions you can drop them in the comment section below i do try to get back to them as quickly as i can i know some of you have requested some videos and they're in the list there's a long list so hopefully i get to them you know sooner than later um and that's about it i hope you guys are doing well with your quarter four sales don't forget evergreens are very important for quarter four because not only are people buying christmas shirts but they are buying gifts for other people which include a lot of evergreen style designs um, because they're, they're they're buying for somebody's you know wants and needs so again have a good quarter four and i hope to see you again so that's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful. And if you would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative. And we'll see you next time.